Hey everybody, um, as promised, I'm doing a Mardi Gras wreath on this live. I'm going to use this sign and then I have a few extra little attachments here um, that we're going to add to the finished wreath. So we're gonna do a little extra um, on this design. I um, wanted to apologize. I was supposed to get this done this morning, but I woke up feeling under the weather and then our nephew had a birthday party um, this afternoon. So I'm, I'm late getting to it, but i um, still getting it here today. I um, want to mention a couple things. On my last live, um, if anybody's interested in catching that, we completed this um, Whimsical Grinch Valentine's Day wreath. Um, so you can find that on my Facebook page. You can find that looking for Carla's Clever Crafts. Um, all spelled with a K, all one word. And give me a second here to pull up my notifications. But tonight we're going to be using the glue gun, so I have to get that warmed up here in a little bit. And then again, um, tonight I did like. Uh, I went ahead and started on the base so that wouldn't take up so much time um, on the live video. I'll explain to you that everything that I've done and all the materials and things that I've used and then we'll go from there and show you the techniques that I used. trouble getting my Facebook to work. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so um, in addition to the sign and the little ornaments that I showed you, um, we're going to be using um, these really pretty Mardi Gras themed ribbons. Um, we have this one um, that has the masks. It's gold, purple, and green Mardi Gras colors. And then we also have this diamond pattern, or I believe it's also called Harlequin pattern ribbon to coordinate with that. And then we're going to pair those two with this really pretty gold and then also a metallic green mesh ribbon. Okay, um, on, on the bottom layer here, I started with this, it's like an, it's, I think it's called old gold mesh collar. Um, we use the Kruppel method. This, this particular mesh came from bbcrafts.com if you're interested in finding this collar. It's the only place I've seen it, but other, other places might have it. Um, and then um, when we do the first layer and move on to the second layer, we're going to be adding this very beautiful metallic um, green, purple, and gold mesh on top of our wreath so that it'll be prominently visible. That came from craftoutlet.com if you are interested in making a wreath similar to the one we're doing tonight. Um, each of the pieces of mesh, um, there's 12 of the of gold on the bottom. You will need um, 12 pieces cut to 16 inches each. Then um, the uh, ribbon tails, it's a little bit confusing, so I wrote some notes here. Um, the one with the mask, we're going to need um, six pieces of this cut to a total of 12 inches long. And then I have these notes that I have, I'm going to add in the comments on the live video once it's completed. Um, so you'll be able to access this if you don't get it all during the live. We're also going to be using six 12 inch piece of pieces of the uh, diamond pattern ribbon. And then this is where what I do gets a little tricky. The gold, we're going to actually be using six pieces of 12 inch. And then we're gonna also need three pieces cut to six inches for the bottom of our wreath. And I'll show you how we place those. Same with the green metallic ribbon. Um, 
we need six of these at 12 inches and then three of them at six inches. And then just real quick to go ahead and mention, so I make sure I don't forget, this is the top layer of mesh we're going to be adding and these are also cut to 16, usually between 16 and 17 inches, I'm not exactly precise. Um, and you will need six total of these to complete this ring. Um, the sign that I'm using, um, I got that last year, uh, I believe at the Dollar Tree, um, and I have not been able to find any this year. Um, it may just be my area or where I live, so you might be able to still find those in your area if you're interested in trying to find one of those. Okay, so to get started, we're going to do our cruffle method with the gold mesh. I've already done around most of the base. We have three twist ties left here to do. Um, if you are interested in learning how to um, apply the pipe cleaners or chenille stems to the 14 inch wire base, um, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I've done two previous videos. You could go back and view those. Like I said just yesterday, I did the Grinch wreath, and at the beginning of that video, I cover how to wire the 14-inch wreath form. And then also prior to that, um, I did another video, I think a couple days ago. Both of those can be found on my Facebook page um, if you just want to go check that out at Carlos Clever Crafts. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. Using the same method, um, mesh rolling method, we're going to do the cruffle. My clip, something to hold my mesh so it doesn't curl up on me. And we're going to fold it over one time, and then two, three, four. I do that just to give us a nice little roll on the end or a curl. Turn it around so that the clip is facing away and do the same thing on the opposite end. Fold it once, twice, three, four. Now we're going to turn the whole thing over completely. Pick it up, turn it completely over and then to get our curl part or our ruffle part of the cruffle, we just scrunch down the middle pulling small sections at a time of the mesh towards us until we get to the end. Pinch them together and then take your clip off. Sorry, I'm getting a notification on my computer I need to turn off so I can see comments. Okay, Shauna says point the camera down. I forgot to move the camera down so that you could see what I'm doing. Thank you, Shauna. Okay, so we have our first cruffle and then we just separate our, our, our pipe cleaners, place it in. Um, we're doing this as similar to the way we did it previously, putting the finished edge to the inside of our wreath and the finished edge to the outside of our wreath on this layer. Give it a couple good twists. And then open up our next pipe cleaner so we're ready for our next cropple. So again, do this all over with them, in case you missed it the first time since my camera angle wasn't good. Fold it and then one, two, three, four. I'm using the word fold it, but you're really rolling it. You're really creating more like a, a round curl. Okay, turn it around so the clip faces away from you. And curl the other end, one, two, three, four. Flip the whole thing over and scrunch it in the middle, pulling it towards you, and then pinch the two together in the middle to form like a bow tie. Place it in, again with the finished edge towards the inside and the outside, and give it a couple good twists. And 
we are ready for our last pipe cleaner on the outside ring. Okay, make our last cruffle for the bottom, but we'll be doing this process six more times for the top, so you'll get to see it several more times. One, two, three, four. Turn it around. One, two, three, four. Looks like I got some marker on my finger. Ruffle in the middle. Pinch it together. And place it in the zip tie. Now because this is our last one, we need to make sure that we lay this in on top of the mesh on this side and then pull this up so that we can place this curl underneath of the one on this side. That way we keep our pattern uniform all the way around with the overlapping. Give it a couple good twists. And then this is what it looks like whenever you have just the cruffles, the first layer of cruffles. As you can see it's kind of thin. Um, this mesh is, is really sheer so it's see-through. You can still see the wire base. Um, but as we layer our additional ribbons and stuff, that's going to take care of that and fill it in and make it really nice and full. Um, this overall finished wreath will end up being about 26 inches wide or about 24 to 26 inches depending exactly how you lay it and then it's about five inches deep so it, it's pretty good it's a pretty decent size okay so then next we're going to do our ribbons on the bottom and this is where I told you you needed the half pieces we have a half of the green and half of the gold you actually need three of each collar now I've already placed in two of each, which I'm going to show you those before I move on to putting in the last ones. And then you need three of the gold and three of the green in the 12 inch. Okay, so the way that I do this is on the bottom, I use a six inch piece of the gold and I'm going to be rotating the collars. So if I start with the gold, then I will do a six inch piece of the green next. And it will make sense to you in just a few minutes why these are six inches as opposed to 12, because I'm gonna layer other ribbons over top of those. Then I go to my 12 inch, but since I started with gold, I'm back to gold again. So we put in our 12 inch piece, then we do our 12 inch green piece. Now, because we did the 12 inch pieces, we go back to the six inch pieces rotating green then gold and then again back to the 12 inch pieces and we do that all the way around the base okay so i'm going to go ahead and come around to this side try to place this so you can see it um i've done a 12 inch gold a 12 inch green and a six inch gold so that means that i need to do a six inch green in this next one now this is a little a little confusing at first, so that is why I'm gonna I, I have all of this written down the wreath ingredients or recipe I guess is what you could call it, um, and I'm gonna put that in the comments of the video afterwards. So we just cr scrunch the um, end that is not dovetailed and twist it in there good, making sure that we have enough of it that it's snug. Now I mentioned dovetailing, so I'm going to go ahead and show you um, again how that we dovetail. Here I have two ribbons. Um, they just have the straight edge like I cut them originally. So we line those up the best we can at the top. We fold those over in half, trying to keep everything lined up as evenly as possible and give it like a little crease on this side. Then we will take our scissors. If I find my scissors and we are going to cut from the folded side over to the wired side or the open side. The, the wired side will be the open side. So what we will do is cut at an angle again from the folded side up towards the corner of the edge of the wired side. And when we do that, that gives us this nice little V shape. 
it just gives your overall wreath a, a more finished professional look so again we just line them up fold it in half and I crease it just a little on the end there cut from the folded side to the wired side at an angle and you can make that be as deep as you want or as shallow as you want depending on how you want your ribbon tails to look okay so now we have the gold six inch green six inch so now i need gold again but this time i need to do a 12 inch to do a 12 inch we just lay our ribbon out find our center scrunch it down the middle and then v it back towards ourselves so it ends up looking like this so then we just place it in, twist our pipe cleaner or chenille stem down, just kind of snug. Usually do it three or four times. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip this off because that piece of ribbon is all that is going to go in that pipe cleaner. Now, I didn't mention, but I need to, the six inch pieces do not cut those off yet because we're going to layer another piece of ribbon over that. So we still need, need these attached to be able to use those. Okay, so now we've done a 12 inch gold. We need to do a 12 inch green. We do it the same way. Find the center, scrunch down the middle, pull it back towards us, and place it in. Um, yes, Shauna, you sh on the six inch pieces, uh, you scrunch the edge that is not dovetailed, so the straight edge, before you place them in. And that's just so that you can get a nice snug fit inside of your pipe cleaner and they will stay. Okay, now we've already, that quickly, finished the bottom layer. We just did this 12 inch piece. As you can see, it's six inch gold, six inch green, 12 inch gold, 12 inch green. And it's that same pattern all the way around the base. And this is what you end up with when you do the solid colors. But now we have our very pretty, sparkly, diamond pattern and mask pattern that we're going to add in. And we need three of each of these patterns. Okay. And one of the reasons, just to mention, the reason that I do, instead of doing um, 12 inch pieces all the way around, and then 12 inch pieces of this ribbon all the way around, is because when you double layer it up like that with 12 inch pieces, lots of your ribbon tends to get lost. And if you do much crafting or wreath making, you probably already know that particularly these design type of ribbons can get very expensive. Um, so rather than having ribbon that's lost in the design that you can't even see in the final result, um, I changed my method to do these six inch pieces um, and then also use a lower number of these because you still get this pretty much the same end result um, with being able to see them spaced out and they're not covered up by other layers of ribbon. You also will still, with the design that I do, still get the fullness and the complete coverage of the wire wreath form underneath. So we're going to start with the mask and we're going to be working only where the six inch pieces are this time. This is one way, um, because I do sell these, this is one way for me to keep costs down for my customers and I can keep the cost of my wreaths down um, to make them more affordable to more people. And, and that's really my overall goal when I'm, when I'm doing this. Okay, so we V it like we did the others. And then I'm going to place this one over the solid gold. I'm going to do the same way. Put it down in pretty tightly, twist three or four times. Now we're finished with this pipe cleaner and we can clip it off. Another thing that you can do with this pipe cleaner is you can just push it down to the inside if you do not want to clip it off and, and go through those steps. Um, I just prefer to do it this way because I feel like it gives a, a nicer finished look 
and also I can squeeze this pipe cleaner when I push it down and I feel like that gives it more security for my ribbon. Okay, so to kind of show you what I meant, now when we have these ribbons in here, you can see the green, you can see the gold, you can see the purple, the green, the gold. We don't lose any of our ribbon. We can see all of the pieces that we have placed in there, but we still have a nice alteration and mixing of the patterns and colors. Now our next ribbon, the diamond, um, we're going to place this over top of the green. And the reason I selected to do this one with the gold and this one with the green is because as you can see, this ribbon has quite a bit of gold and purple in it um, and a smaller amount of green. By putting, if I put this with the gold, I would end up with a whole lot of gold in one section. So by putting the purple with little amount of gold over the gold, and then this one with a little amount of green over the green, I spread out my colors better throughout my whole wreath. Okay, so again, we just scrunch it in the middle, pull back towards us. This ribbon is a very, very thick ribbon so it's a little more difficult to work with but it's very beautiful one of my favorites even though I don't live in New Orleans okay place it in the exact same way twist snug and clip it off And then we have the two 12 inch pieces. We're gonna just skip right past those and move to the six inch pieces. Now you could, if you wanted to keep this pattern of these ribbons going, you could do these as six inch and then also layer these here. Because these are so bright and bold, I choose to space them out more. So I'm basically gonna have them in three different places on my base. And then when I do my top layer, they will be in three different places on my top. So I feel like you still get the effect of the ribbon all around without using as much of the ribbon. Okay, so we're doing gold, six inch next. I'm new to live, as I think most of you know. This is my third one. Um, and I tried to do something new tonight, so I'd like to get some feedback to see if that worked. I tried adding a poll to the live video, and the poll was about what type of wreath designs or techniques you would like to see in the future. So if anybody is on here, both either live or replay, um, if you see that or don't see that, can you give me some feedback? Next, we're on the diamond. We're just rotating different colors, different, or different patterns, rather. one more section of six inch ones to complete. So we do the mask over the gold, scrunch it. And then as I'm placing my ribbons in, I prefer to fluff them out and get them to lay pretty much the way that I want them to as I go, as opposed to waiting until after I have them all on there. I just go ahead, kind of push up on the inside center here to give it an arch, 
and then just try to get, you know, like a nice little curl as they come out to lay around the mesh. And then, of course, sometimes you have to adjust it because it does what it wants. Okay, and this is our last one on the bottom layer. And then we'll be ready to move on to that really beautiful um, metallic deco mesh. Okay, so now we're going to work with this. I'm going to go ahead and get them separated so they're ready. This is really thick, high quality mesh, so as you can tell it separates very easily. It doesn't catch on itself as much as some of the um, lower cost value meshes. Okay. Okay, and before um, we start cruffling, we need to remember when we wire our wreath frame, we have the six pipe cleaners that are on the inside ring. Um, we're going to have to pull those over here to the outside so that we continue building up our design on top as opposed to shoving stuff in the inside here. So we're just going to reach between two pieces of the mesh and pull those pipe cleaners to the outside, just like that. Reach in between these two and pull to the outside. Okay, and we'll go around and do all six of those. And this is why the second layer of mesh um, only requires six, because we're now filling in those six pipe cleaners on the top two rings. Again, if you're not sure what I mean when I say the top two rings, um, my prior two videos do go over how to wire the wreath form and talks about um, placing them on the top two rings and the bottom two rings and explains that in detail. Okay, so now we're going to again cruffle. Same process. Just kind of fold it over and then roll it. One, two, three, four. Clip it. The other end. and then scrunch it in the middle and then I want to show you what this bow looks like as opposed to the thinner ribbon the value mesh that we used on the bottom the gold is a value mesh um, and this is a, a more higher end mesh and you get a much different result a much different look um, to your ruffles that is why I use this on the top where it will be prominent this time, instead of laying them with the finished edge to the inside and outside, we're going to actually turn that and put the finished edges to the right and the left. And then again, we're going to put it down in that pipe cleaner. We'll pull it down in there a little bit, but not too much because we don't want to lose the, the beautiful mesh down inside of the rest of the mesh on the wreath. And then I'll just adjust it the way that I want it and then we're ready to do our next one. Okay, one, two, three, four. Turn it around so the clip's away from you. Do it again. I wanted to show you too, my cutting is not perfect. So if you cut your mesh and, and it's not perfectly even, that's perfectly okay. It will still it will still work out exactly the same. Um, I noticed that it wasn't even when I started rolling it. Um, I have a bigger piece in the middle than on the outside. But do not fret about that because your, your wreath and, and your overall design is going to come out just as beautiful despite that. Scrunch down the middle. And place it in our next pipe cleaner. Finish edges to the right and left. Now here, I'm going to just kind of rest these up against each other. 
makes it look like a, you know, a couple nice little bows, large bows. Thank you, Desiree. Do you? Um, yes, Brian, I do. I fold it over about a half an inch. I do keep that pretty tight when I'm rolling it because I cut my pieces 16 to 17 inches. So if I make my curls on the end too big, then I don't have enough mesh left in the middle here to do my scrunching to get the proper ruffle effect. So maybe, um, let me see if I can show you on the camera like how far I fold it down and then I get these kind of small curls so that I still have a good bit of length here to scrunch it. Now if you wanted to do bigger curls on your end, you could certainly do that. Lots of wreath makers do. Um, but you would need to cut your overall mesh pieces longer than what I'm recommending for this wreath design. Okay, this wreath is for a customer that has purchased it. Uh, actually, I hate to say, because I'm doing this on a live video, but I'm actually sold out of this wreath and I don't have the signs anymore. Um, so it, it, it won't be available in my Etsy shop. Of course, Mardi Gras is just, I think about a week, week and a half away, so. This was a very popular design. I had four of them and this is the last one. They're all gone. So this is something for you to think about if you sell race or even if you just love Mardi Gras decor, making your own. Um, it does. It is a beautiful final result that's been very popular. Show you real quick how this layer of mesh what a difference it makes when we're turning it the other way um, this is the side that we haven't done you can still see it's kind of sheer you can see through to the wire in places but once we put this mesh on it is completely covered we're also getting a pretty good depth from the bottom of the wreath to the top and then we still have another layer of ribbons to go on the top plus our signs and our little ornaments we have two more pieces of mesh Designing wreaths is one of my favorite things to do, and sometimes I design them, and I just think that it's going to be the most fabulous wreath, and then I put it together, and I don't like it at all. So, um, however, when that happens to me, um, I typically still go with it, because everybody's taste is different and, and unique, and sometimes I will have a wreath that I've made that didn't suit my taste a bit, and it will be like one of my biggest sellers or biggest hits because other people um, whose taste is different from mine really like it. That's something else to keep in mind if you're, particularly if you're watching videos for the purpose of learning so that you can sell. piece of the mesh. So we're, we're getting there pretty quickly. Okay. Alrighty. Now we need to do our next um, row of ribbon. This is where we're going to do the crisscross X of our ribbons. gold I should have three I feel like I lost a 
couple pieces of ribbon. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna follow the same pattern, matching the purple with minimal gold with the gold. We're gonna make crisscross like an X, scrunch down the middle. You see there's like a little V here and a little V here. I aim to start at this V and end at that V, just scrunching. And then I pinch it together to keep the X form. And then we just lay them in to each of the six pieces of deco mesh, twisting it. Now here, sometimes if you wanted to add um, little foam, say you had crowns or masks or something, um, sometimes I, I did that with hearts for Valentine's Day, you can attach those to these wires and not cut them off to give like additional decoration to your wreath. Um, but in this case, um, these are wood, wood ornaments that I'm gonna be gluing in. So I'm not gonna be using those, I'll cut those off. Honey, Brian, I don't see my husband. Okay. And then again, I'm just fluffing them up. I push out at the base down next to the twist tie and then curl it out over the mesh so that it lays nice. And then that's what it looks like after you put it in. Very pretty. Okay, so then we need the diamond and the green. Um, I mentioned again real quickly, I always put my design pattern on top and my solid color or whatever other wreath uh, or ribbon I'm using on the bottom. I want, um, I always choose the two that I want to be more prominent and put those on top. to tuck those down in and squeeze them after you clip them off. Give security to your ribbon. Okay, and moving on to our next. And I did misplace some of my ribbon. I had them when I started, I know that for sure. So then while we're, we did the green and the diamond, so now we're back to the mask and the gold. We just rotate the patterns all the way around. Something else that I haven't mentioned is I usually try to match my pipe cleaners, although I'm not always able to do it if I'm running low on supply. Um, I try to match them to a collar that is in my wreath so that they blend in and don't stand out. So for example, if I used a bright pink on this wreath, um, you may see like the little nodding down in there, but, but by using a collar that matches it, it blends in and you don't even notice that. So now we're back to the green and the Harley Quinn diamond pattern. Make an X, scrunch down the middle, place it in. Snip it. 
crunch it. <clears throat> I should be doing a gold and the mask, but I've misplaced one of my mask pieces of ribbon. So I'm just going to dovetail this because I missed doing that. I'll show you how to do that one more time. And then I'm going to lay it to the side and skip the section that it goes in until I find my missing piece of ribbon. And go ahead and go to the next one. <clears throat> I always misplace something when I'm making a wreath, always. Whether it's my clip, my scissors, ribbon, <laughs> very important. Let me show you. Um, on this side, you can see before I fluff it, how the ribbon is kind of sunk down in. When you fluff it up, push this up right here, it gives it a nice, a nice way to lay and also makes it show much better. Some ribbons will naturally flow out like that and then other ones you, you will have to form them. This is a thicker ribbon here, so it requires a little bit of forming. Okay, so this is the wreath minus two of my ribbons so far. Very full, very pretty. Can't really see the wire now. And we're going to get our sign and work on that next. really puzzled by my lost ribbon. Okay, so on this particular sign, and I know it's backwards for you guys, I apologize for that. It says Mardi Gras has the mask. Um, there is a hole in the center at the bottom here already, so I'm not going to have to hole punch down there, but there's no hole at the top in the center, so I'm going to have to put a hole there to put my wire through. And to do that, I bought these um, metal hole punches off of Amazon. I uh, mentioned previously, but I'll say it again. These are all metal and really heavy duty. Um, some of the ones with the plastic handles and stuff are not quite as durable. I had a pair of brake on me, so definitely recommend the all metal. Okay. Use the floral wire from the Dollar Tree 26 gauge. Um, you get a hundred feet of it for a dollar twenty-five. And I twist off probably about a foot of it. Um, it's not gonna need to be that much, but like I said, it's easier for my hands um, if I make it longer and then just cut off the excess. So then I have a little pair of tiny wire cutters that are perfect for this. Just snip it off. And I don't measure the wire, I just guesstimate the amount that I want to use. And I'm using the gold wire because that will blend in with, with the wreath. And I also like to use this wire because it's very thin, um, as opposed to pipe cleaners. I've, I've seen people attach these signs in different ways. Um, when you use these, these little pieces of wire, you cannot see them in your wreath. They do not show. Um, after you put it all together. So we're going to put the wire through the top hole, lay the sign face down, and match up, even it up as much as you can, two pieces of wire, and then we're going to twist a knot into it right over top of the hole that we just made. 
Do not twist around the edge because then your sign will be wobbly and it will move around. So just twist over the hole so it will be more secure. I give it a good few twists. And then we're going to turn around and do the same thing with the second piece of wire on the bottom of the sign. ready. We're going to attach this wire to the metal frame at the very base of all of this. I'll show you the thickness and so that you can see how full it is. Um, that is a reason I like to have this extra length because sometimes your mesh is harder to work down through. Make sure your sign is right side up when you place it in the wreath the way that you want it. And then just work it with into through the mesh. Take the two pieces of wire and make sure that you wrap them around two of the metal rings on the bottom. Um, if you do it around just one, it's less secure and has a tendency to move around. And if you do it around two, it gives it more security. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this glue gun on because we're gonna need that here in a few minutes. And I twist when I'm putting my signs on probably at least a good 10 times. I wouldn't do less than 10. So you definitely want to make sure that's going to stay. And then the other thing that I do after I get all my twists and I trim off the excess that I don't need. We do not want to scratch our doors. So I take this piece of wire that I've now twisted together a bunch of times and I wrap it around one of the wire rings. I'm going to try to do this holding it up but I've never done that before so that you can see. And I just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until I can push the end of it up inside. So here's our end. I want to make sure that that is up inside on the inside of this ring so that it's nice and smooth and doesn't scratch or damage a door. Okay, now we need to attach the top. The exact same process, only I like to pull my top layer of mesh up when um, particularly this sign nestles nicely. It fits almost perfectly right in between those pieces, six pieces of mesh on the top. So I want to make sure I have these pulled out so that I don't mash them when I'm adding the sign. This is one of those signs that is a size that I like to have it nestled down inside the mesh a little bit as opposed to laying on top. Okay, so just pull our wire down until we get it to where we want it. Make sure that we are going around two wire rings, not just one, and twist. and secure that around the wire ring until we can push it up inside to ensure we don't scratch our doors. And this is what it looks like with the sign. I think I've got a bad reflection. And so now our glue gun is starting to warm up and we need to add our three, I guess you could call them ornaments. Um, the way that when I have three like this, <clears throat> the way that I choose my placement, oftentimes when I have attachments on this particular wreath design, we have these 
six sections. So I usually like to place my attachments in those six sections to make them prominent. Here we have three, and I wanted to choose the best placement to where they would be visible um, and evenly spaced out on the wreath. So I wanted one, I'm gonna do one down here at the base of the sign, and then I'm going to do one on the upper corner of, of the sign, on, on the opposite side. So one on this corner, one on this corner, and one at the base, and that gives me like a nice V pattern and a, and a good overall finish. And then these will be visible when it is hanging on the door. Okay, so I think the glue is just about ready. I'm using a uh, Ryobi glue gun. Compliments of my amazing husband who got me this from Home Depot. Warning, it is very hot and I burned myself constantly um, but it's amazing and I uh, have never found anything that works not even close as well as this does so I am going to add a good bit of glue and then this crown is a little bit bigger than the mask so I am going to actually place it and if you can see up here in this top corner and just hold it there holding it to the ribbon and I'm gonna hold it there and let the glue dry for a little while. I hope you can see that. I'm even gonna reach behind the ribbon and press to the glue just to make sure it's getting a good grab so that we don't lose that. There we go. And I just got glue on my finger. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this one next. And I'm going to place it on the opposite corner of where we just put the crown. Liberal amount of glue. Careful not to stick your hands in that. Or more importantly, don't let it drip on you, which is what I usually end up doing. And the same process on the other side. <laughs> yeah, Morley, I guess you do miss it. I, it was wonderful when I visited there. And definitely this theme is absolutely gorgeous. I wouldn't mind visiting again. We didn't, we weren't there during Mardi Gras, so that would be a different experience. Okay, and then the last one, the mask, is the littlest one. So I'm going to put it down here at the base. And I'm going to try to just like angle it in here, probably about like that. So I don't want it to be up over top of the sun, but I do also want it to be visible. Okay, liberal amount of glue. And I'm going to actually try to pull a little bit of this ribbon behind it to make sure it has a good catch. stuck my finger in it again. Thank you, Patricia. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Desiree, tell Marie I said thank you. I had to find a way to incorporate all my 17 grandkids into my videos. Okay, and that's done. I've turned off the glue because that will continue to heat and melt everywhere. If we don't, it literally gets that hot. And I'm gonna to try to show you where we did the little ornaments. And then after the live, I will find my missing piece of ribbon and place them up here. All with the same technique though, so it's perfectly fine. Um, we'll mention um, my next live, I'm going, I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to do it. I have several planned that I need to do. I have two different pet race that I'm going to be doing next. And then I also have a bumblebee gnome theme. That's more of a summer, quite a jump ahead, but I had a customer to purchase one. So I'm probably um, going to add that on my list of lives to do in the future. 
Um, I still have the discount code um, for watching my lives all the way to the end. If you want to buy um, from my Etsy shop, this is applicable to every single item in my Etsy shop. And it is FB Live Thank You, all capital letters, all one word. And it's good for 20% off of everything in my shop. And that's just a way for me to try to say thank you for people who are helping me to get started out. And then uh, if you could, please, it helps me greatly if you could like this video and share it to your page. Um, also, uh, go over to Carlos Clever Crafts. I believe um, you should be able to access it from this live video and follow me. And then I've added a link to the live video also that will take you directly to my Etsy shop in case you do want to take advantage of the 20% off discount. Okay, thank you very much for watching again. Um, I, oh, quickly, this will also be applicable if you're watching on a replay. So if you're watching on YouTube replay or later Facebook live replay, um, this code will still be valid. I plan to leave this up for quite a while until I get my following built up. Um, and uh, that way I can continue to thank those people that helped me get my start. Great, have a great night and I'll see you soon.